Okay, I'm having a wonderful evening so far. I started out with uh, the whiskey that um, the video that I recorded will be seen after this one. <laughs> so it's a little awkward. Um, but um, I have here one of the last remaining whiskeys that I brought back from Scotland last year. This one here is a Long Row Red. And it's, uh, the, bo the box got a little beat up because it was in my luggage coming all the way from Inverary, um, Loch Fine Whiskey Shop, right near the church in Inverary. In my luggage all the way from there to here. So it got beat up a little bit and it got banged around and, you know. Open this up carefully. Thankfully, the bottle was not destroyed by the by being in this flimsy little container. What I'm going to do is first pour a dram and then read what it says on the box and on the label, and then I'm going to nose and I'm going to taste it. However long it takes is however long it takes. This is a rare bottle. They only had one in the shop, and that was uh, on April 1st, 2019. Now it is the uh, February 8th of uh, 2020. So I'm pretty confident you'll never get this anywhere else anymore. Delicate little pop. Real cork. Makes all the right noises. This one is bottled at 53.1% alcohol by volume. Distilled, matured, and bottled in Scotland. Limited edition, long row red, Pinot Noir cask matured, age 11 years, peated Campbelltown, Single malt Scotch whiskey. Uh, J and A Mitchell and Company Limited, Campbelltown, Scotland. Okay. On the box, it's going to say a bunch of stuff too. J and A Mitchell, Scotland's oldest distilling family, opened their distillery in 1828, on the site of the previous illicit distillery of Archibald Mitchell. It is unique among Scotland's distilleries in that all parts of the production process from traditional floor malting to bottling are carried out in the one location. It is the only distillery in Scotland to produce three different single malts, Springbank, Wanero, and Hazelburn. And yeah, that is the box. That's going to go up on the wall naturally. I believe I have had a long, one long row before. I forget where it is. Or was that a Hazelburn? I don't know. Maybe this is the only Long Row I ever bought. It was the only one left at the uh, store, at the shop in Inverary. And that's the only thing I bought at that particular shop. At the uh, Loch Fine Whiskey Shop. And what a selection they had. The video's still up. You can look up Loch Fine food quake, whatever, and show me going, it shows that, you know, what I saw in the shop. Maybe I'll put a link in the description of the shop where I got this. Uh, okay, I'm getting some wine, and I'm getting some peat. Neither of which is really overpowering. It's a red wine, and it's a dark red wine. It really fills the nose with that wine finish. I'm no expert on wine. I know nothing about wine. I'm going to... Uh, 
cleanse my palate from the whiskey, which should go uh, public in about a week and a half because it's a sample Sunday. <coughs> Got some uh, dark fruits, grapes, dark grapes, wine. Maybe not so much. Maybe it's a little bit subtle. And I'm getting some peat, but it's not reaching out and clobbering me over the head. This might be gentler and more subtle than the Isla style that I'm used to. Because I, the next whiskey is going to be heavier, stronger, and meaner. I'm getting some peaty notes now, but they're not overpowering. I'm getting a little bit of chocolate as I delve deeper and deeper. Try to get I'm getting a little bit of caramel too. Caramel, dark chocolate. Hmm. Maybe it needs time to open up a little, you know. That's also a possibility. It has the UK stamp on it right there. Oh, it says a bunch of stuff on here too. I should maybe read this. Okay. I'm going to read this. Fine print. First distilled in 1973, Longrow is a double distilled, heavily peated single malt produced at Springbank Distillery in Campbelltown. The malt is peat dried for up to 48 hours to give the whiskey a unique Campbelltown style smoky character. This Longrow red single malt scotch whiskey has been matured for eight years in bourbon barrels, followed by three years in Refill Pinot Noir Barriques from acclaimed winemaker Grant Taylor's Valley Vineyards in central Otago, New Zealand. Only 9,000 bottles at cast strength will be available. As this whiskey is not chill filtered, a natural haze may form when it is cold but this will disappear when the temperature returns to normal. J&A Mitchell Company Limited, Camelton. Ha. Ah. Interesting. So this very interesting. 9,000 bottles. 9,000 bottles you would think would last a little while, but this is worldwide. And this is long row. So long row expressions are hard to find. I, I dare anyone to find this again. Maybe it's on the secondary. Maybe there's some bottles on the secondary market somewhere. I'm not going to find out. What did I pay for this? I will have a look. Here it is. Lock, long row red lock fine whiskeys in Verary. Um... It says here 72 pounds and converted to Canadian it was 130 $130.26 Canadian. And that was the 1st of April 2019. There's even an authorized code. This was I paid I paid for this with my uh, 130 Canadian. That's not bad really considering, you know, it's cast strength. You can't even get this here. Had to go to Scotland to get it. Okay. I'm getting a little bit. A 
of sulfur, just a tiny little bit, almost minuscule. The red wine keeps asserting itself. And on the nose, I'm not getting much peat. But wait, my mouth is watering just nosing this. Let me cleanse my palate. Okay, here we go. Long Roar Red, 11-year-old Pinot Noir cask matured. Cask strength. Ah. Oh, that does coat the mouth with red wine. It is dry, very dry, and it's a thick coating. Let's have a little look at the legs, which I forgot to do so far. Oh. It's one of those that doesn't really cling to the sides. Or maybe the glass was just not washed properly. It's not overly viscous, but it coats the mouth. Wow, does it ever coat the mouth. And I'm not really getting a lot of peat on this. Not much at all. I think in this instance the wine the wine finish is so strong it is so overpowering that it just covers the peat and buries it Maybe it will take a bit of time to open up. I'm going to give it the whole water treatment too because maybe that will make something else happen. Maybe it needs to open up a little bit. I think maybe it does. Once again, tiny little bit of sulfur coats the mouth like crazy. It's almost like a Vicks cough syrup kind of flavor to me. But what do I know? I have put a few generous drops in here of water. But does that ever coat the mouth? That dry wine, that dryness, that wine finish just coats the mouth all over. Wow. I'm not that big on wine finishes. I've had a few Mostly Tully Bardin, Tully Bardeen. And their wine finishes kind of overpower the whiskey. Don't get much distillery character on those. And what other wine finishes have I had? The Tully's, yeah. Uh, can't say that I've had that many wine finishes. Um... Maybe a couple of Canadian with uh, ones like Bareface. I went by a store earlier tonight, and that stuff was for sale uh, on sale for like thirty three dollars a bottle. Very good. I should have picked one up, but I was looking for something else.
But this I brought all the way from Scotland. Limited edition, it says. Red wine, dark fruits. Tiny little bit of sulfur matchsticks. Red wine. Raisins. Dates. I almost want to see Turkish Delight, but it's not quite Turkish Delight. Mm. Oh. Yes, this one needs a little water, at least initially. Now on the neck pour, it needs water. I wonder what will happen to this as it opens up some more. I'm getting more peat now than I did before I added the water. Uh, it's uh, I can't really pinpoint the peat because it's or the peat smoke because it's it is covered over by that thick, heavy, thick and heavy wine finish. Eight years in ex-bourbon and three years in Pinot Noir casks. Were they butts or uh, casks anyway? Yeah, now that I added water, I'm getting a little more peat. Not bad at all, but I think this bottle needs to open up. I may come back to it someday. Right now it's closed. It, need, it, it leaves something to be desired, at least in my opinion. But I'm not really an expert on long row. But I'm just telling it like I experience it. Okay. Yeah. I may have to come back to this one. Slachava. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. A funny thing happened to me after I took that last pull on this long row red Pinot Noir cask matured, aged 11 years. I said Slancheva and I took a pull from this glass. And the finish, with a little bit of water, the finish is amazing. It's just hanging on and hanging on and hanging on. It may take some getting used to, to this heavy wine finish, which kind of overpowers the uh, depleted uh, component of this whiskey. But... The finish is still hanging on. 